Hello. Uh, I'm mysteriously connected all by myself. <laughs> That's because you didn't disconnect. Oh. Your 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 uh, team speak was constantly refreshing. Like no server, no server, no server, no server, no server. No server. Oh, hey, server. <laughs> Yay! And then it did the little Kermit the Frog. Frog. I call that Kermit arm flailing. <laughs> I was just waiting for the little notification to pop up from Steam. Ripper is on. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> you know how Tess was saying that she wants to get a bit of a proper ranger's companion? Uh huh. We should get him a Tibetan Mastiff. He can use it as a mount. Oh god. <laughs> I'm like so tired of those fucking things. Fucking Or a great day. Great day. Name it Scooby. Great Dane and call it Scooby. Dog farting. Dog farting. <laughs> Could have a uh, an, an entire just just story arc related to Fib and Great Dane trying to sort of Cascadian dog <laughs> Cascadian dog tournament. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Heard right. <laughs> I was saying that uh, Fib should get a Great Dane. I was actually just thinking about what my familiar should be. <laughs> I think Fib having a Great Dane would be fantastic. I was I was talking about we get some, like armored dar dog barding, get right in combat. Uh, I don't want a Great Dane. I want a Rottweiler. Not sure. If, well, no, but you're the you're you know, size of a small child. That's too big. Rottweilers are huge. And they're muscular, they're strong. Great Danes are big, but they kind of have crickety bones. Uh-uh. Yes. Not all the Rottweilers I've seen. Most of the Rottweiler types of guys. Hmm. Well, the Rottweiler, I knew the one... Well, I've known quite a few of them, but the one, Zeus, he was real big. He was real big. Uh, he was pure. They they do make multiple- they do make, um, specific breeds of Rottweilers of specific, uh, sizes. Other ones I've seen are only sizes. Or you could have a Mastiff. Oh, I'll give I, you I was, a Mastiff. I was, I, was, I was also suggesting Tibetan Mastiff. Mastiffs are huge. Yeah, they are. And they're cute. I had an ex-girlfriend. You could have a... Oh, what are those called? Um, They're really aggressive. They, they're not Chow Chows. They're... Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas are... Oh my gosh, they're so aggressive. They're so annoying. We can huh? get him a Pomeranian. 
It would just be like a normal sized dog for him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I want him to have a ride. I want him to have a big dog because it'd be a riding dog. Or he could get like a an rhinoceros. Owl. Like, like a great horned owl that can pick him up by the shoulders and fly him around. <laughs> Didn't Tholek like, get a rhino at one point? Yes. And yeah, it was dumb true. as fuck. Wasn't constantly <laughs> chewing. Constantly <laughs> chewing. I remember one time I rolled to see if it would spook the rhinos and the horses. The horses all got scared of something. And the rhino just kept rhino chewing. Gave no fucks. Wow. <laughs> 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 I also remember it took us longer to get to places because the rhino couldn't travel as far as horses. You can only get to places as fast as your slowest person. Yeah, a, a Rottweiler is technically a large dog. Medium dogs are things like Labrador retrievers and boxers. I say we should get him and... like a lab. <laughs> There you go. Get him a Greyhound, he'll be really fast. Greyhounds... They are, they're, they're, they're... They're so skinny. Magic Greyhound? Greyhound's creepy. <laughs> it's like a tiny dog wrapped in a big dog body. Well, anyway, are we officially ready? Oh, I've had it while we're talking. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue if we're even going to get to the map. <laughs> I just figured I'd have something to broadcast. A nice, static image. <laughs> uh, all right. Take that off. Welcome, everyone. Another exciting episode of... We doing D and D? Yeah, D and D. I'm even. I'm wearing my D and D shirt. Oh, the one for Loot Crate. Yeah. Hey, Loot Crate. Where we we have like two active watchers. <laughs> you should give us a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do such such things. We'll see a massive increase in your <laughs> clientele. Oh. Uh, you can't even say that with a straight face. You need to work on your lying. Uh, I'm good at lying. That's just... Uh, that's just... That's just beyond... Above and beyond. <clears throat> ah, anyway. So, recap of what happened last time. You killed a fire giant. He was a pirate captain. He liked to steal things. From government. Like uh, every great pirate. You guys leveled up. Which, by the way, did you guys actually level up? I did. Tasman yeah. forgot. Uh, yes. Poor shame. <sighs> Poor shame. Um, anyway. Leveled up. Everybody got two grand for gold. Helping Delthea out. Thera. Yeah. <laughs> Delthera out. Delthera. <laughs> And you guys decided, well, you guys were in the, you guys were, were quite there, but I'm pretty sure you're going to keep the airship. Yes. I would. Fuck yeah. Which is going to make uh, Jackson incredibly happy because one of his, uh, where is it? His thing wants to have a ship like a big ship. Huh. Ah, his aspiration. Someday I'll own a ship of my own and chart my own destiny. And while he technically does have the uh, the gun di the gunboat diplomat, he, he he means like an actual ship, like an airship, a big massive, like that you currently. So he he's he's quite happy with. Yes, let's keep. Is he going to be able to staff it? That is the problem. The <laughs> pirates, once you killed the captain, decided to take off. Yeah, they're like, no, fuck this. <laughs> Bib wanted to make him walk the plank. Uh, the, the ones that were left either took escape 
odds for the remaining jets? I think there should be a janitor that 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 stays working there, and he's like, I'll just work here. You mean like Scruffy? Yeah. yeah. Scruffy. <laughs> Scruffy don't care who's in charge. Long as Scruffy gets paid, no boy <laughs> goes into his locker. It's a strange feeling you'll actually pay me. So, who's that guy? I'm Scruffy. I'm the janitor. <laughs> I also work on the engines, guns, pretty much everything important. I know this place like the back of your hand. But what? <laughs> <laughs> back of his daddy's hand. Oh. And then it got weird. Yeah, yeah then, we, then we crossed weird territory there. Cards Against Humanity territory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. That still left you with, uh, well, you, you signaled to the to the uh, Summer of 69, which is the airship you were traveling. Summer of 69. And let them know that the airship was now in your command. Uh, Lyle came over and you're like, okay, well, we'll take him to obey and drop him off with whoever it was that Sadie said that you were going to meet. Hey, hey, Francois. Yeah, right. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old Francois. So you have a slight problem. You can't really openly fly it around right now because, well, it's a well-known pirate vessel. It needs repainted. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. But it does have that cool little cloud feature where it can turn itself and make it look like a cloud. I think it should... I think it should be painted blue. I think we should paint it red. I think we should paint it blue like the sky so it's hard to see. But okay. I'm guessing we have to find a place to hide it. Or like I said, if you're going to fly it into the... If you're going to fly it anywhere, I'd highly suggest using its cloaking system. Which is, you know, forming a cloud around it. Moving as a cloud. So I'm going to guess that's what you guys do. Yes. It's the only reasonable oh. thing. I imagine Jackson at this point would be the one in charge of flying it. Him and Victor. It's probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your call, Ko. <laughs> what? No, nobody yeah. would trust Alan. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Short answer. You turn into is a, no. You turn into a giant frog demon after smashing your plane into a fire <laughs> giant once, just once, and bam, you're the bad guy. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's also. A little concerned about that. Long answer is hell no. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't put it against them to have put him in a brig or something because he turned into a giant horny toad demon. For some weird amalgamation of half elf. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway so moving to Kyobe um, you guys act as an escort because that's kind of what the contract was or you know Yay. not having to pay for the tickets so yep. <laughs> <laughs> the summer of 69 is flying along the uh, alongside this cloud that's flying along it that's not suspicious <laughs> that's not weird and it's not exactly a small cloud, because the Summer of 69 could literally fit inside the Executioner's pile. Do, do, we, have, do we have, like, a, a giant thing that we can use to broadcast just a normal cloud here? <laughs> to start Give it a playing, smiley like, old-timey ragtime music or something? Yeah. So the rest of the trip is fairly uneventful. 
Um, to get down to the city, you guys just jump in the... See here. Jackson can take one person. Victor can take one person. Alan wants to ride with Jackson. Oh, I was about to say, Alan's not going to jump in one of the extra jets? No, he'd, he'd totally take an extra jet. Oh, okay. The LAS, the dick or two. Bib <laughs> wants to sit on Jap Jackson's lap. Pretend he's steering? Yep. <laughs> I guess that means that Sadie's driving with, or flying with Victor. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you get down there, and at the aforementioned eating place, which is of course a tavern, because it's D and D. You all meet in a tavern. You're always gonna have a meeting in a tavern. Eating in a tavern. And besides, like the 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 place where you're gonna find Francois, where you found him last time. <laughs> So anyway, not like he's trying to hide himself. He's wearing a, he's wearing more clothes than he normally wears. So there's Yay, that. well that's something to be thankful for. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you, Francois. But he's still sticking with his pink and yellow theme. So he's got... How old is Francois now? Francois is ageless, thank you very much. <laughs> he's Sid. There's always a Francois. Yeah. There will forever be a Francois. <laughs> Francois is love, Francois is life. <laughs> he's something anyway. <laughs> so anyway, he's wearing a bright yellow suit. Oh god. With a bright pink, you know, button-up shirt under that, and a white tie, and a, uh... uh... I mean, it's not an ascot? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a formal go. occasion. There we go. A bright, a bright white ascot, and what am I thinking? I'm thinking trilby. Is that the right word? Yeah. I, I think it's. I think. I think he's wearing a yellow trilby to go with the uh, to go with the outfit. And it sounds silly, yes, but you have to bear in mind that is a minus the colors. That's that's normal dress for most people. <laughs> Jackson just walks around in his mechanics uniform all the time, mostly. <laughs> he, he's got that look where he's got the sleeveless shirt on, and he's got the rest of the onesie mechanics thing tied around his waist. I imagine it being like a slate blue. Yeah. But I'm saying normal people wear the the, the are like I've like I've described in the past. They wear the, the like '50s style suit, tie, and hat, or the '80s style. Le denim and leather. That's what Fib wears. Here's an important question. Yeah? Did Alan's clothes survive? No, no. You're currently wearing what we could find. Yeah, remember we found you pirate clothes? What kind of pirate? Are we talking like... Captain Morgan pirate. <laughs> no, we're talking like... Like when you think of a pirate deckhand, that kind of outfit. Oh, like I don't get a cool Captain Morgan coat? No. <laughs> So like, like striped pants and a white peasant shirt. Yeah. Alan is very upset that his clothes were destroyed. Got like trying to find a good picture, decent. Now, if I wanted the sexy pirate costume, I'd have typed sexy in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Alan's wearing a sexy pirate costume. <laughs> Last fight is... Hey, I was something kind of like this. Of a ratty torn shirt, torn pants. Everything's kind of held together by a strip of fabric around the waist. Alan refuses to wear the shitty mustache. <laughs> but we got it directly off of one of the pirates you killed. No. <laughs> so the pirate came with a stick on mustache? Is that a part of the, no. <laughs> no, <I'm saying laughs> the uniform I, requirement? I'm saying we scalped him. 
Oh. <laughs> It'd be lipped. That's true. I would think that Alan lipped. would love to wear someone else's skin on his face. Why? Freak factor. Just because it was morbidly funny. That's weird, though, and and gross. He only does exactly. certain kinds of weird. That not being yeah. one of them. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> so anyway, as you walk into the tavern, you see a half orc dressed in a bright yellow suit, pink button-up shirt, great, and a uh, white ascot. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, guys." Oh, Sadie, it's so nice to see you. You're looking lovely as ever. Uh, yeah. Hey, Francois, nice suit. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. Got it. I figured I'd dress up a little because I was meeting your friends. Oh, my, what a bunch of cuties. <laughs> oh, and who's this little one? Oh, my God, you are so adorable. <laughs> he, he, he crouches down. Even crouching down, he's too tall for him. You have to lay down. <laughs> is it? What is Francois? Is he? Oh, he. He's Francois a is a big gay orc. Half orc. Big gay. Big oh. gay half orc. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so what? So I'm I'm seeing this very friendly, big gay half orc. Cool. You are just about the adorablest little gnomey guy I've ever seen. I'm not adorable, I'm tough. You're kind of adorable. I'm tough. <laughs> I, I, I can just imagine <laughs> Alan in his, his pirate outfit, this is like this ratty ass thing. I don't know, you're kind of adorable. I'm tough! <laughs> no, I'm tough. Look at my outfit. <laughs> More like flea bitten, but okay. Say again. Flea bitten. Mangy. Yeah, well... Scruffy looking. You're scruffy looking. Anyway. Oh, I guess that means Lyle rode with, uh... With, uh, Alan. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he just got left on the pirate ship. <laughs> like, just, yeah, like, the entire time. Dude, this is pretty neat. Guys. Dude. So you like know how to fly this, right? Oh god. <laughs> Dude, that cloud over there like totally looks <laughs> I don't normally do this kind of flying. <laughs> I, think, I think this is the highest I've ever been, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Alan gets on the ground. Somebody else take him. Please. No more. About to get shanked. I will shank a bitch. <laughs> Alan takes a, a temporary uh, <laughs> negative to his intelligence modifier. <laughs> temporary negative and a plus one to all initiative checks because he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Alan saying saying something like um. The only way I can deal with it with him is if I'm smoking the same shit he is. <laughs> um. So this is the guy that's causing all this trouble, huh? He kind of sizes up uh, uh, file. <laughs> Some world we've come to. This is what uh, can take down a politician. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> You've never been stuck in a plane with him. Shut up, he's helped us out. No, you shut up. <laughs> you see what I'm traveling with? <laughs> I can see, yeah. Now, despite the appearance, they don't really seem like adults. Well, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad to see that my elf genes have kept me young. At least they're doing something. 
You know, I once had the biggest crush on a half elf. It was really pretty. <laughs> well, I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> but I prefer my guys nice, big, strong, muscular. Well, I should introduce Alan, 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 sla Alan slaps uh, Jackson on the back. <laughs> Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> Everyone just kind of gestures to Jackson. <laughs> Two words. Fuck y'all. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, no, he's. It, our treat. <clears throat> anyway, Jackson goes to the bar and starts drinking. Francois's like. <clears throat> Maybe if you have a moment, I'd like to talk, you know, business. <laughs> Is there a drink involved with that? <laughs> oh, business. <it's> <laughs> of course, we're in a tavern. Who wouldn't be drinking in a tavern? I'll be having an apple martini. I want one. <laughs> uh, you're you're a little young, Fibber. Give him a give him a. <laughs> I'm gonna once again show show the bartender my ID. <laughs> You're racist. You won't serve me because I'm a no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm still Robert Downey Jr. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Terry Crews here. <laughs> You're the one that made me have the. You're the one that made me make the IDs. Yeah, I know. I know. You you did this to yourself. Hey, he wanted to be Terry Crews. Yeah, I was about to say if you're gonna make me somebody, make me Terry Crews because you know he's like the bomb. He's awesome. He's one of my spirit animals. <laughs> <laughs> one of. I have several. Well, Beth pull. Or, oh my God, Beth! No, not Beth. Sadie, Beth's not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd have to be. Com we'd have to be playing like a lawful evil campaign or something. <laughs> <sighs> something. <laughs> um, Sadie pulls up. Uh, Sadie pulls up a. Sorry, Sadie pulls up a stool, and kind of just. Well, you no, know, he's motioning what? to a, you know, a table in the back away from oh, everybody. Oh, fine. Okay. You know, that, that kind of talk business. Right. All right. Well, then she kind of just says, well, hit me up with the whiskey and keep him coming. We could talk all you want. <laughs> oh, hon, just give her the bottle. <laughs> that works. Believe me, she'll finish it. Yep. <laughs> but you can keep those apple martinis coming. He kind of oh. wink, he winks at the bartender and you know does the little the the, the twirly finger wave. <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> bartender just shakes his head. <laughs> you weird shit. They don't pay me enough for the shit. <laughs> you adventurers dressed in the weirdest fashion. Nice normal. <laughs> Anyway. Biddy's just relatively normally. She just probably looks kind of shabby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure people give her weird looks because she, you know, walks around in a French coat. Yeah. <laughs> that's d d that's normal for my people here. <laughs> for your people? <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm not talking <laughs> what in What do game. you mean, you people? Most of the guys I know in real life actually wear trench coats. Well, I know a guy that wears a trench coat. You have to think about it in that it's the 1950s and there's a woman wearing a trench coat 24-7. Okay. I get 1950s were a lot different. Yeah. I mean, yes, you have that, that like 20% of the population who's gone the full 80s punk look, but she doesn't even look like that. No, kind of like worn trench coat, torn jeans. <laughs> so, like, what she, are you she, trying she to doesn't do? Look, she doesn't look like either of the two normal groups of people. No, no, she doesn't. <laughs> of course, Jackson just looks like your typical average Joe working guy. 
And Alan currently looks like he put on a bed sheet. <laughs> Cut a hole in it. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so <laughs> Francois like so anyway, getting down to like actual business takes a sip of apple cleaning. Yes, please, let's talk business. <laughs> So one of the operators, um, one of the one of the mages, to be precise, uh, has been noticing some really weird trends going on in uh, North and kind of Central uh, Lantern. We were kind of wondering if you could take a look at it. I mean, we're, we're seeing things like uh, he whips out a small notepad. Um, there's been a couple of blights, um, some animal mutilations, think people stuff like that. Classic. Yeah. It all seems to be focused kind of in this one kind of area, and we were wondering if you'd, you know, mind taking a look at it. Yeah, no, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll head right over there as soon as we can get, get there, really. Uh, wow, but all three at once? That's kind of... Well, it's been going on about for... What was it? What, what was it she was saying? Uh, last, like, three, three weeks? Three weeks? Yeah. How many have there been? Uh, there was the there was two blights. It had several uh, farms in the area. Just all of a sudden, everything was dead. The trees, the crops, the animals, everything. They had the strange animal mutilations, with, which uh, happened weirdly enough at a at a well while the animals were being transported. It's really odd. Transported where? No, no, I mean like they were being transported from one place to like the like the slaughtering ground or whatever. Oh. And uh weird. When they opened the uh the animal container that had, you know, everybody the airship had for them, um, they they were like missing their heads and completely drained of blood. Okay. Just like in transit on an airship even. Yes. And it happened as they were passing over this kind of area. He pulls out a, or, well, he kind of pushes back his uh, his sleeve, revealing a hollow top. It's it's something that you just have, like how the Kawe stones can broadcast a little hologram of whoever's talking to you. It's like that, but it's in watch form, and it can okay. do that and broadcast a, on the table, you know, like around alcohol and everything, but a map of the area. It's like it shows where the airship crossed. It shows the couple of areas where people have gone missing. And, and the two farms that had the blights. And it's kind of this, like, I don't know, 50 mile radius. Oh, that's weird. Really localized. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll definitely take a look at that, because that's pretty out there. <laughs> Lyle, unbeknownst to the two of you, was listening in. Of course he was. He, he's pretty sneaky <laughs> for a stoner. I think Lyle should be my mount. <laughs> Kinky. I mount the that's, illegal. That's gross. <laughs> I mount the stoner. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Oh my. Um. Anyway, he like peeks his. I head got up a dirty over. look. He, he he peeks his head up over the table. You're not quite sure when he got there, but he's like, dude. Like right here. And he points at uh, the town of Rosewell. <laughs> Meanwhile, I imagine Katie's kind of looking at Lyle like. You know that part in, in, in Lord of the Rings where Elrond kind of looks at all the hobbits as they show up to the meeting uninvited? Like, the right. fuck are you doing here? <laughs> like, the fuck are you doing there? And when did you get here? <laughs> and it, it's not it's not like at the center of the radius. It's kind of off-center. But he's like, dude, I'm like pretty sure that uh, they were sending some cultists to that uh, to that town there. 
Well, okay. Great. So it sounds like, Francois, uh, Francois, that this is tying in with what's already going on. Oh, great. There is Dune related. Just what yeah. I wanted. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, Lyle, for that wonderful insight. Dude, you're like totally welcome. I have a drink. <sighs> Will it make you go away? Nah. No. Dude. <laughs> All of a sudden, Alan or Jackson's noticing that Lyle's gone. <laughs> Say that again, keep Jackson, Jackson company. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson walks noticed. over like, when did? How did? When, no, like, crap. <laughs> Grabs Lyle by his hood, drags him off. Do me a favor, buy him a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't he buy himself a drink? He doesn't have any money. He's a stoner cultist. Well, whose fault is that? We should give him an allowance. Oh, he's not going to be. He's not going to be on the team for much longer. Oh, uh, so just because they're not. I thought we were going to keep him as a pet. You can't just keep people as pets. <laughs> you could keep Lyle as a pet. <laughs> uh, anyway. Huh. So the night continues. You guys get a nice rest. Either at the tavern in nearby hotel or in or, at, or back up. The important thing is, is, before you guys left the tavern, um, Jackson definitely started a fight because of <laughs> Damn it, <And> Jackson. <laughs> let's just say that you weren't exact, you didn't leave the tavern of your, by your own choice. <laughs> you may have been asked to leave and threatened with the cops. <laughs> damn it, Jackson. <laughs> he looked at me funny. I don't give a damn, I was trying to have a drink. <laughs> You... <laughs> she says with the bottle in her hand. <laughs> exactly. It's just imagining it's like this half empty bottle in her hand. <laughs> I was I was drinking you. Try to have a drink. You fuckhead. <laughs> you guys just inherited a pirate ship. I'm sure there's alcohol on it. <laughs> grog. You ever had grog? I've had grog. Grog, this is grog. It's grog. Also, the only thing I managed to really look at while we were on the way over was we desperately need to, to go on a, 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 a grocery. Groceries. All they have is spam and big beans. Ah, uh, a delicacy. Wait, what's wrong with that? I would like to not have day after day three meals of spam and big beans. <clears throat> At least the spam wouldn't constipate you. <laughs> Looks like we have somebody here that isn't a team player, Jackson. It is sort of plagues. <laughs> How is Fib agreeing that the, it's not going to give you the stuck up poops? Not being a team player. No, I'm saying you're not a team player. Why Where did you, that come from? Why, why are you telling me that I'm not a team player? Because you don't like spam and baked beans. This fight words? You want to fight? Yeah. Freaking weirdo with the demon half elf. Fucking Mary Sue shit. I shut up. Mary Sue shut up. <laughs> Sadie kind of just wanders off a few feet, bringing her bottle with her. I don't want to die for this shit. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it more than you do. I, I don't think I can fly. Don't oh, it's okay. I don't think I can fly. It's okay. I'll fly. No, no, no. 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 I'd rather I'd rather Jackson fly drunk. <laughs> oh. 
anyway, you guys get a hotel room. Pretty cheap. Like, two gold. First. Wake up the next morning. So yes, note, note that you, you have lost. Yes, I am noting that. Who took it? You had to pay. Can I steal it back? <clears throat> Take it out of the tip jar. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just getting change. <laughs> can I use one of my many credit cards that I've accumulated <laughs> through the wallets? Um, yeah, if you have corresponding ID with it, then sure. In fact, oh. if you did that, you could save everybody the two gold. <laughs> I, I have a bunch of IDs along with the money. I was gonna say he's got entire wallets. <laughs> yeah, like I, I've got Frank, Sam, and Biff Hardcheese, the Bugbear Brothers, the Colton Sultan, and some guy, the Adulterer, and I also have thirteen dead people with wallets. I just imagine, you know, you have the IDs like bound up in a rubber band. You have the credit cards bound up in a rubber band, and you like get up to the counter, and he's like. You, you've changed all of the ID's pictures to be you? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> In fact, from now on, if I don't specify what Alan is doing between time periods, assume he's making false IDs for himself. <laughs> but, you know, th there's always the, the, the joke, I'm sure everybody's probably heard. Uh, uh, oh wait, wh which, which card did I give you? I gotta know which ID to hand you. But I just see him pull. He, <laughs> you, go, you guys go to the hotel, and he pulls out the two rubber band piles, and he's like, uh... "Ah, here you go, here you go." Guys, kind of looking at you funny. Nah, nah, just go ahead, go ahead, run it. Yeah, <laughs> give yourself a ten dollar tip. It's fine. <laughs> Not like it's my money. I mean... I'm very wealthy. I have many cards. Look at them. Well, no, don't, but don't look too close. Yeah, don't, don't, look, don't look too close. <clears throat> Just run the damn card. Okay, so he manages to save you guys some money. Not that it was much, but he saved you some money. Alan is sure to remind them of it repeatedly on the way to their rooms. Does Pip get his own room? No. I say it's not like it's you know, his money. He could, he could probably get his own. Okay, Pib can have his own room, but I don't like it. <laughs> Anyway, next day... I somehow you... expect there to be, like, crayon marks all over the walls or something. He's, like, <laughs> raided the mini-fridge. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like a $400 charge for candy. It's okay, I used a dead guy wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, officially Did we kill? <laughs> officially classify that as a probably not going to be used again one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pip goes in the room, jumps on the bed, turns on the TV, plays with all the plays with the light switch, eats everything in the mini fridge, then decides he wants to go down to eats everything in the mini fridge and the decorative soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was say once Sadie's finished with her bottle, she's probably raiding the bar. Probably. It's, just, it's okay. You can just you can just charge this to the room. Fine. Let's charge it to the middle room. Charge it to the room. Fine. Did you guys eat? Did you guys find that chocolate in the bathroom? That white stuff? Yeah, it didn't taste so good. It tasted bad. <laughs> it was a very though, good chocolate. My mouth feels really clean now. <laughs> also, I can make bubbles when I burp. I have to go to the bathroom real quick. That, that well, wasn't a character, that was actually you know, that, you know what that means, Rip. You know what that means. What? You gotta roll for it. Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> I, for I, I forgot. <laughs> oh, no. He's gonna poop his pants. Yeah. 
Yes, I am. You have to. You can only take three steps. Make them count. <laughs> uh. That's okay. We can keep going without you. Completely forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oldie but a goodie. All right. Move the chair. Ron, I move. I I got three steps. They need to be really. Ah, no, further away from me. Mm. No, <laughs> I can just go. I can't. One. Ah. You're the worst. You're gonna fall <laughs> on her. Two. And then shit on her. <laughs> Alright. One. <laughs> Get back in here. Go. <laughs> if I touch the bathroom door, that's good, right? Yeah. I touched it! Get back in there! I, I touched it! It counts! I made it! You should have seen him bunny hopping. Uh. Oh, so on an off topic, I can now revive you guys if you die. Well, I can revive one of you once per day. <clears throat> it, that reminds oh, me, though, in, in, in the in the jewels that we have saved up. Somebody had jewels. I need three diamonds, because <laughs> that's the only way I'm going to be able to heal anybody or uh, revive anyone. I have a ton of jewels, but I don't think any of them are diamonds. Yeah, I didn't tell you what they were. They were just jewels. It, it was fib, and he didn't ask. Well, there was that one spell I told you. About. Remember, I said that that was like a, that was a fucking expensive spell component. Yeah. It needs a diamond that's worth at least 50g. Have Alan oh, start stealing oh, jewelry like, for you. Oh, oh that's, yeah. what, that's what you think is expensive. It is to Sadie. <laughs> Do you know what Revivify takes? <laughs> Three diamonds worth at least 300 gold each. So we are keeping track of spell components then? When it says things that are like that... Where it has like an actual oh. cost to it. If it's normal things like, you know, the, like like a candle or stuff like that, I figure that's stuff that you might carry on you. However, when it's more expensive things, then yeah, you have okay. to go and buy those things. You should have. You should start paying Alan to go and steal jewelry for you. <laughs> All you need no, are a couple. Then you know what would happen. Sadie would pay him to steal jewelry, and then he'd go and fence the jewelry, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What Probably. do you mean he'd fence the jewelry? He'd steal <laughs> it, sell it, take both take both Take both money. the money she paid him to do it, and the money from the jewels. <laughs> That's what would happen. That's why you pay him after he gives it to you. <laughs> Because, I mean, you you could try and convince him, use persuasion, and be like, hey, if you want to survive, or, hey, if you want me to be useful, I need these things. I need the diamonds. He's not very persuasive. What happens if you... <laughs> what happens if you, um... Go to use a diamond for a spell, and it's not actually a real diamond? Oh, well, if it's, <laughs> it's not, not diamond, worth it's 300... <laughs> I'm about to say, <laughs> not really such a thing as a thing. It's just a different thing. <laughs> well, rhinestone. But that's not a diamond. It looks like it. Well, fool's gold looks it looks like gold. Doesn't mean it's. Can you appraise? <laughs> it would not work. <laughs> if it was a fake diamond, then whoever I was trying to bring back from the dead would probably end up being a zombie. Or something. <laughs> the, last oh, thing um... you, the last thing you want to be skipping on is spell components for bringing your friends back from the dead. Yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> Um, Fib got Charm Person for his m most recent spell, and um, 
I think what I'm going to do with him is do, like, the Puss in Boots thing. <laughs> oh, he just looks up with those big those big anime eyes? Poop out, food in. Yeah. That's what my mom calls it when, when the dogs give her that kind of look, or the cats would give her that kind of look. Dude, uh, don't give me those big anime eyes. <laughs> this is my mom, who, like, never watched any anime. <laughs> uh, don't give me those big anime eyes. You're not cute. Stop it. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Um, I've, like, like, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but since I was little, I've always had the insane ability to give people puppy dog eyes and get exactly what I want. Specifically sure my papa. that's not because you're a girl? I know a lot my, of girls my grand... that. That might be that. But with my, um, with my grandfather, all I have to do is give him the big, give him the big puppy dog eyes and be like, Papa, and he'll be like, what do you want? And I'd be like, can you drive me here? And he'd be like, get in the car. He can't resist. <laughs> I'm about to say, I once talked, uh, I, I've told the story before where I talked the pilots into letting me ride shotgun. I love that I was, story. When I was five or whatever, however old I was. <clears throat> that is such a cute story. It's crazy. <laughs> I wish I could have done that when I was little. Yeah, I'm one of those kids, it's the reason why they invented those child wishes. <laughs> I got lost in the mall once. I've done that. Yeah, I've done that as a You remember? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when you were super little? Did you guys ever hide from your parents in the clothing racks? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. I'd do that and I'd pull out my Game Boy and play it. I was also notorious for going under the table at restaurants, but they yeah. usually let me because I was a quiet kid, so as long as I, I was content, they too. didn't care too much. <laughs> I'd do that, yeah. <laughs> Sit there and play under the table, whatever. <laughs> Only little kids and drunk people can get away with that. <laughs> drunk people can't get away with it. <laughs> They're just too drunk to care. All right. Well, drunk people can get away with it in their own minds. So anyway, next day you get up, you jump on the airship, you start moving your cloud. And after about a day's flight, eight hours or so, you end up near the town of Rosewood. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know some information? Yeah. About Rosewood. Let's stop at the 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 tourist center. It's where <laughs> aliens landed. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Rosewell is a city in northern Lansing on the Yazgur Peninsula approximately 160 kilometers southeast of the popular tourist spot and gambling mecca of Paradise City. Currently, it has a population of uh, 35,000, approximately, uh, making it the ninth largest city in Lansing. It is a center of farming, dairying, fishing, and airship manufacturing. It is home to the Corona Smith Airship Corporation, also known as Asacorp. The largest airship manufacturer on the planet. The Corona Sea National Park is a few kilometers north of the city. Population-wise, the demographics for Rosewell's population are as follows. 70% of the, of the population is human. 25% are fake hen, elves, ladrin, dark elves, stuff like that, or drow. 2.47% are gnomish. 1.28% are dwarven. 0.65% are Goliath, and the other 0.6% are from other races. 41% of the population claim to be from at least two or more races. What are we talking about? The population of Rosewell. We just... We just got here. 
In recent news, there have been uh, recent racial tensions and claims of oppression by the humans from the other races of the city. The government. Pretty simple. It has a mayor and a city council. Although, a uh, mayor and a city council. The rest you can find out. Uh, notable traits. Rosewell was the first and only city in Lanson to ban all religious practices, and it also has, is known as uh, as having some of the best food in the world. Especially if you like fish. Okay. So I like yes, fish. There, there, there are no temples, no nothing there. Um... Let's see here. What would that be? A... Well, you can probably just bring this up by searching it. Cascadian equivalent. But there have been claims of corrupt city officials. There's the racial tensions between the humans and the other races. Of course, you know about the cult and all the other stuff that that's causing. Um, ooh, here we go. Popular and notable businesses within the city. There is a brothel named Leah's House of Pain. Okay. Their slogan is, how may they please you? Uh-huh. Uh, there's a human-only club called the First Man. Um, Alan would try to sneak into that place. <laughs> there's a coffee shop called the Magic Bean. A magic shop called the Brewing Stand in Advin Mart. That's actually where Advin Mart got its start. Was here in Rosewell. Basically, they're the fantasy equivalent of Walmart. Okay. Advin being short for adventure. Gotcha. They sell everything from swords and armor to camping gear and fuzzy bunny slippers. Did you name this place after Roswell? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Roswell has That's been a thing since the first campaign, Rip. Has it? Yes. Oh. It's one of the city. KO, you can't expect me to remember things. <laughs> it's right across. It's it's right right across the river is this is the is Fort Sirach, the fort named after Tholuk. KO. You realize that I am I forgot about the the place that apparently I named. Uh, there's also, as I mentioned before, the Arona Smith Airship Corporation. And of course the Rosewell Airport. Now, because they have the Arona Smith Airship Corp there, they might be able to Depirate your ship. Depirate. Back to the Everybody, give me insight checks to see if anybody comes up with that idea. Can you grab me a D twenty, buddy? Where's my D twenty? On the table. On the table. There you go. Seventeen. Mm. Nine. Not Alan. Alan is quite content keeping his uh keeping his his new pirate ship a pirate ship. Alan rolled so low he's like, well we can just land at the airport, can't we? <laughs> I'm just test rolling right now. I'm not actually rolling yet. <laughs> Mulligan. Pick out the die I Mulligan. Use. Mulligan. I found the Mulligan. die I want to use. 
Mulligan. I got an 11. Plus. Plus. Wait, insight? It's under wisdom. wisdom. Ooh, I have jack of all trades now, which means I can add half of my um, proficiency bonus to any roll I make. So my proficiency bonus currently is three, correct? Yes. So oh. that's an extra one. one. All right, that's a total of 13. Not enough. Thankfully, Jackson pulled enough, although it would make sense for him to success. Yep. As it was only mentioned in passing, as you were getting the information from the uh, airship computer system, um, it was a DC-20 insight check to, to figure that out. I got uh. a 22, so... Jackson's <laughs> like... I, I, I'm sure we could we could figure out some way for them. I, I, I mean, it just needs a paint job. That's not going to be too expensive. And it's not like we're poor. True. And if we all chip in, that that should be fine. Um, you do have a. I'm going to assume you probably gave all the dead pirates a burial at sea, i.e. you dumped their bodies into the ocean as you were flying. <laughs> <laughs> Scruffy probably took care of that. He's used to it. I'm used to it. What? How about, like, instead of doing that, because it leaves a body trail, just throw them all in the boiler? I don't know, a bunch of pirates wash up on store sure who's gonna yeah, care makes sense ah, it's probably the nasty things that live in the ocean probably eat them think of it like feeding the fish fib chum <laughs> chum in the water do you know do you know why they call chum 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 <laughs> chum chum it's called chum because you feed it to the fish and then your buddies now let's feed the fish. Is it like feeding the birds at the park? Yes. But with human bodies. You mean and they're health. dead? They're sleeping. Mm. It, didn't didn't you ever read that story about the guy that gets eat, eaten by the giant fish and he lives inside it? I don't read. Alan's like, I, I don't really read either, but... Uh, I, saw I heard about it once. <laughs> I saw a movie. I saw a movie through a window that I w <laughs> off a roof. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, in their little squatting, squatter area, he, he stole like a telescope. And he's just watching somebody's TV through it. Oh, I'm so glad this person puts on subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> if only I knew how to read. <laughs> Nah, Alan knows how to read. Yeah, he'd be taken advantage of too much if he didn't. Exactly. That's why he learned to read. <laughs> he had one bad experience when he was a kid. He was like, screw this, no. <laughs> Learning how to read. So he stole somebody's wallet, used their credit card to get himself hooked on phonics. <laughs> and taught himself to read. So, now, now we run into the problem of the pirate airship landing at the, either the airport or at the uh, Asa Corp is not going to go over well unless you can convince them that you're not the pirates. So here's your chance. Oh, wise and mighty rogue. Yes. Now let's get this straight. You want to convince them that we are not pirates. <laughs> you need to use all of your forgeries to make, at the very least, one of us. And no, you can't choose Fib. 
either yourself, Sadie, or Jackson. The proper owner of this? I was going to say more along the lines of maybe a police officer or a member of the GMD <laughs> or someone in the military. Which technically, Jackson's still part of. Alan volunteers himself because it's the most believable cause. Clearly, I, the noble half elf, would have would have secured this from those savage pirates. So anyway, you have to come up with. I guess you have to. You have to make Robert Downey Jr. some form of the man. Huh. Either government agency or police force or something. Well, what's the government? Like, what's this version, this world's equivalent of the FBI? The GMD, the Global Moderation Division. They function as a hybrid of the FBI and the CIA. Yeah, Alan, Alan's going to make try to make his ID one of those. Okay. That is a DC-20, but I'm going to give you a plus one because you have a perfect ID with your Robert Downey Jr. one. Alright, and what, what what sort of check is this? Uh, what you mean, Um, deception. Okay. You should be trained in. Bib, inspire me. You can do it. That counts, right? <laughs> as long as he's using his bardic inspiration. Yeah, he did. Confusedly, you can but do he did. Do it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Alan's sitting there with his ID. He's like, Fib, inspire me. He's just kind of like. <laughs> So you go to the Do computer. the thing. You go to the computer. <laughs> so, first off, you have to get into the GMD database. Okay. We're going to have... You know how kind of uh, in 4th edition how, how we would do it is you have to get like... You have five chances to get three passes. Uh-huh. Before you get two failures. Something similar to that. Okay. So, you have five chances... You need three passes. No, fa uh, you have two failures. Once you get to two failures, you're done. You'll have to try something else. Okay. This is all deception. All right. Okay. Here we go. Deception check one. Holy shit. Nineteen plus four plus three. That more than succeeds. More than succeeds. All right, roll two. 17 plus four plus three. So he's clicking away, clicking, 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 clicking on the computer. You, you know, Everybody's like, Alan, how do you know how to use a computer? <laughs> oh, there's a lot about me you don't know. I took a class at the Y. The what? <laughs> at the Y. The why are you here? The why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> At the youth center, the place where you can go to get free showers. Free showers and drugs, mostly. And... 18, plus 4, plus 3, plus that 1. So you're good there. That's 2, right? That's 3. Oh, that's 3? Right, yeah, it was, the first was a 19, the second one was a 17, the third one was eight, an 18. Aha. Ah, okay. I got you. Um, so you are successfully in the GMD. GMD That's the noise games. he's making. <laughs> Just bring up Hacker Typer. Yeah. <laughs> that hit Alt and F1. Access granted. Yes. <laughs> I, I wish I used my computer somewhere public so people could see that. Like I want, I want to get a, I want to get a laptop just to use Hacker Typer in public. Yeah. Alt F1. Access granted. <laughs> And then you have to quickly exit out of full screen and have a video playing that shows a bunch of windows popping up at like the White House and <laughs> a bunch of like a bunch of those uh, closed circuit televisions that aren't or uh, camera systems that aren't actually like properly secured on Google. <laughs> right, and then you get you, you, you get one of those you know board game plants with Bluetooth headsets. And you're like, okay, I'm in. I'm I, I need to... I, I'm looping their videos now. You're good. I need to be doing that and then playing Ingress on my phone so it's talking to me. 
Uh. And then, like, the moment somebody, like, notices me, grab my shit and run. <laughs> uh, okay, so now that you're in there, it's gonna be another one, except this is, uh, four. You get two failures, two successes. To get into the right area so that you can insert yourself into their system. All right. I still have inspiration. Another 19. Nice. Dice, that die is loving you today. Don't say anything. And an 18. Good. You're in the right area. Now you need to bullshit your way into making a believable uh, profile. That's going to be uh, four successes, two failures. All right. 14 plus 4 plus 3 plus that 1. That's enough. Nice. Critted. Perfect. Keep going. That's two successes. Four successes, two failures. Oh, okay. I misunderstood you. 17 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1. You good? Ah, oh, I dropped it. Uh-oh. All right. What's that? It's a... 16. 16 plus 4 plus 1 plus 3. What's that put me at? Enough. Oh, okay. That's, that's 4. There you go. You success... You, ha you are, as far as the government is aware, without looking too closely at your file. So as long as you don't draw too much attention to yourself... You're an officially recognized member of the Global Moderation Division. I can't believe this worked. <laughs> Moscow you, kill. You are Agent Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best campaign ever. Um, <laughs> you can now bring up a window, which will bring up a little chat window. And... Um, you know, accesses the camera that's on it, and you're speaking with a representative of the GMD, and now you need to order your ID. Basically, just have to... I lost it. So give me a, a deception, and it'll be against their insight. Alright. But you, ha you still have the plus one, the fact that you did such a good job with it. Alright. Ooh. 11 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1. What's, what's the, uh, how does the... 1d6. 1d6? Well, no, you're 1D6. fine, you're fine. Oh, I'm fine. Okay. Oh, hello there, Mr. Er, Agent Junior. Agent Downey Junior. <laughs> and how are we doing today? Yeah, um, it was going pretty good, but you know what? I kind of ran into these pirates. <laughs> yeah, I... I... <laughs> Oh, okay, so here's what went down. I was on a ship, and we got jumped by pirates. You know, shit happened, and <laughs> apparently my ID got blown up in the fucking confusion. I, oh, I that feel like is it. horrible. Yeah, are, but... Are you okay? Ah, uh, my suit's a little scratched up, but hey, I'll, I'll, I'll get it fixed. But yeah, I noticed that you're wearing... that. That's quite the interesting outfit you have on. Yeah, like I, I said, my suit... Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so we need to get you a new ID and a new badge, right? Yes, please. Okay, let's see. You can just. I love your secretary voice. <laughs> if you can just <laughs> confirm your credentials. Yes. Another deception. Fourteen plus four plus three plus one. Really. <laughs> Good job, though. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. Yes. Palms are sweaty, knees are shaky. Vomit on my sweater already. Mom spaghetti. Knees are spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> Hands are spaghetti. My knees are spaghetti. There's spaghetti on my sweater already. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I enjoy that version of the song way more than any other version I think I've so ever does heard. Everyone. Anyway. I love that song. <laughs> But I love the version where everything is just mom spaghetti. <laughs> um, is all, okay, I am accessing the printer on the pirate ship. 
Never thought I'd get to see those words. Oh, you agents, you live such an exciting life. Uh, it's... It's alright, but when... We really look forward to the times when we can just finally come home. Aww. Insane. Do you have a Mrs. Downey? <laughs> Maybe some tights? Not yet. Oh. Oh. Oh, Mr. Downey, you're... you're... I just imagine him leaning in, putting his, you know, chin on his... On his <laughs> is... Not yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody else is like... Ugh. Alan's going to just slowly assimilate his real life, his actual ID into Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I am no longer Alan Payne. I am Agent Rob Robert Downey Jr. Where do the lies begin and end? I don't know anymore. Uh, anyway. So, luckily the pirate ship has a built-in 3D printer. Weird. <laughs> they steal government shit all the time. Yeah, I, like I, I'm pretty sure if you went into their into their storerooms, if you actually explored the ship, you'd probably find a bunch of government issue weaponry. We should go into their sh in their storeroom. I feel like this is one of those instances of you telling me telling me to try something without actually saying try something. Kind of like. like Kind of like whenever I finally figured out that I can hit enemies into the air. <laughs> I just love after how long months. That, after months, and and Mick and I were always talking about. I wonder if he's gonna realize that <laughs> there are three dimensions. We may play in a top down, you know, uh, on a top down Board. program. But there are three dimensions. At least, maybe even four. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Invaders from the sixth dimension. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so the printer prints you out a new a new badge, and then she faxes over all of the information for your ID. Like this is a temporary one. If you can give us a. Uh, actual mailing address, then Jackson's like, just have him send it to the garage. Let Victor go get it. Uh, Alan has to, you know, tells her to send it to whatever the garage's address is. Alright, well, it'll be there in three to four weeks. Ooh. Mail system. Yes, well, we have to run it through a bunch of stuff in order to get it printed. Mm. Anyway, if that's if that's all, then uh, I hope you have a good day, Agent Downey Jr. Thank you, you too. Screen goes black. You are way too good about to lying, or you are way too good lying. I know, baby. Way too. Good. <laughs> the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. I I honest I really cannot believe that that worked. Me neither, but that works out well in your favor. Because <laughs> now, now, you don't have to pay for the repairs and everything. Oh my god, I'm getting the government to pay for it. Yes, you are. <laughs> Once you flash them your credentials, you can, you can charge it to the government. <laughs> uh, You're awful. I'll have you know that I proudly serve the, this country as, as a member of the GMD. I, I think the least Jack, of Jackson, they... Jackson's like, you know, as a vet, this really pisses me off. <laughs> but it's saving us money. I'm going to ignore it for now, but don't push it. Don't push it. <laughs> Alan puts his hand on Jackson's shoulder. He goes, "We're brother in arms, brothers in arms." <laughs> what a dick! <laughs> Jackson's Jackson's reaching for the hammer. 
Oh my. Uh, anyway, so. You fly up to the city. In the cloud disguise. You alert the people down at the... At the plant. It's like, you know. Please don't shoot me. We're going to turn off the cloaking device. You're going to see a pirate ship. But I swear to you. That I am in control. Anybody else hear that? That beep? Yeah. Yes. That's my washer or dryer. Oh, okay. Well, that's not a part of the song. <laughs> it sounded like it was coming through my headset. It but, was. Oh, yeah. Like, somebody honking outside? I don't know about this, man. And you land and they're... Out, dude. And you tell them, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You can just charge it to my government account. It'll be fine. <laughs> they start working on their repairs. Fixing where the, you know, where, where Demon Allen emerged in the explosive pile driver. Repainting it. Refitting everything. New windshield. And you're free to go to the actual. Now, one of the nice things is on board this airship are some cars. Are they nice cars? Well, no, it's more like a transport truck type thing. Ah. Uh -huh. For when they landed and they, they were bringing one? back supplies. Do what? Bib wants to drive one. He can sit on Jackson's lap again. Okay. I have to buy marbles. Have to buy marbles? He has to buy marbles. I have to buy marbles. Okay. Well, once we get into town, then you're free to do what you do. <clears throat> okay. I should probably buy ammo. So, and as promised, to the government. you guys can now... I, I wouldn't push it. <laughs> Not exactly going to be cheap getting a uh, retrofit on a airship. That's true. Ah, uh, Nubian, eh? Because <laughs> <laughs> they offered to give you the works. See, normally it was just going to be a paint job so people didn't think it was the uh, pirate ship. But they offered to give you the works, and you're like, yeah, sure, charge it to the account. <laughs> But as promised, you can now buy new weapons, get stuff enchanted, whatever. Go to the town before trying to track down the crazy that is going on in town. And as we are getting to that point, I will explain to you. Well, mostly explain to Tess because she doesn't have my weapon in. But first off, 5th edition's weapon enchants kind of suck. They're lackluster. There's not a lot of them. And I really enjoy all the cool ones that are from the first and second player's handbook in fourth edition and the adventures. And I'll be happy to put those in Dropbox so that you guys can. Cool. <sighs> I have to like poke at things a lot, probably. Poke at things a lot? What do you mean? I don't know, shopping. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, but how I do with weapons and armor is slight change to how it used to. You can get it as masterwork, which is your typical magic, you know, the plus one to everything. Mm. And then in addition to that, you can get an enchantment put on it. And then that's all you can do with it. Or, alternately... You can get two low-level enchantments put on it. Nothing too fancy. Well, I think we'll need to figure out how much we have from selling all this shit. True. That's definitely <clears throat> something you should... Did Alan ever raid all the bodies? All the bodies? Because I know he would. Probably, but they're pirates, so they wouldn't have much. Probably not even wallets. That's true. 
They have like pickles in their pockets and stuff like that. Something to that effect, yeah. Pictures of the whores that they've bedded. <laughs> I would imagine most of the money was in the vault. Hmm. What do I want? But either way, like I said, there's a magic shop if you want stuff for spell components, if you want stuff enchanted. Uh, there's Edvin Mart, where you can go to buy new weapons if you want to get new weapons. Um, at Edvin Mart... They can tinker with your... They can trade out the components on your Magitek sword. So that it can be a sword and something else other than the spear. If you want to swap out the components for the spear for something that... Is actually... also a finesse weapon. Yeah. Time to look at finesse weapons. Too bad I can't have a spear gun. Or a sword gun. You could. Oh. You can have them fit in a pistol. Actually, I guess if it was a sword, it'd probably be more like a rifle. Like it'd be kind of like, uh, what is it? Like Dargo from Farscape. Both a sword and a gun. Or and a rifle. Weapon stuff. Cause I'm not sure if, not sure if you guys still have the adventure, the stuff from Fourth Edition. I lost it all because of. Hard drive I am a, not sure. A dot. I, I, I have all my stuff. I think. I Don't might I? have it. Uh, Adventures vault. I don't think I had all of it anyway, but. And player's handbook and two. Player's Handbook 3 is not going to do you very much good. Because it's all about psionics. None of us are psionic. I'll be a psionic. Ooh, sword whip. Okay, Ivy. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Only if I get to wear stuff like she does. Endless. Oh, that's Excellent. right. I forgot I did that. Oh, wait. A whip's a, a martial melee weapon. I, I'm not good enough to use that. Here. Uh, share the link. That's for the Adventurer's Vault. And then I made my own PDFs. For the Magic Weapons and Armor section for the first player's handbook and for the second that way it's just the just the weapons and armor section from them Of course, as you are level 6, you can only get enchantments that are 6 and down. So where it says, like, magic armor or, you know, magic plus 1, that, that's a masterwork piece of armor. But one of the things that I liked about 4th uh, edition is actually give you a price. Not so clear in 5th edition. Plus it has that nice little thing where it's like, oh, level six, you can have this or this or this or this or this. Charts are handy. I do like charts. Let's see here. Hey, um, a while back, I got those bracers of arching. I don't remember what they do. 
I don't remember if I could even use them. Race is a virgin. I believe they give you a plus one to all uh, no, bow attacks. Like range. Does that uh, include the hand crossbow? I think it was just bow attacks. That should be... Hold on. Let's see, those are in the DMG. Fifth edition. DMG. Treasure. Magic items. Bracers of Arching. Bracers of Bracers of Archery. While wearing these bracers, you have a proficiency bonus with the long bow and short bow. Okay, I should and probably I said, sell that then. And I said you could also have a proficiency bonus with with rifles as well. Uh, Does anybody want it? Not what now? Bracers of arching. If Archery. not, I'm just gonna sell. Or they? Yeah, that that. What did I say? Arching. Like you're an arch ne nemesis. <laughs> he is. <laughs> the bracers of arching. Tib don't speak so good all the time. No, I'm gonna say no because Sadie doesn't use bows. Anyone use rifles? You know, it doesn't list a price for what. Hmm. Because they are a wondrous item. Oh, one of the things Sadie can buy is uh, masterwork uh, ammunition. Like it would be expensive for something they get then. I don't think so. I think it's like five gold. Uh, or I don't want her, the her bracer or something. Sweet. Problem is that's a wondrous item, so I'm not sure if that's a. Well, if you have the sir sword turned into a rifle, then you could have a plus one to attacks with it. Hmm. Er. Yeah, plus two bonus to damage rolls. So you gain, Actually, yeah, you gain proficiency in rifles, so you can add your proficiency bonus in, and you get a plus two to damage. Ah, uh, fuck it, I'll take him. Bracers of Arching. I was wearing them on my legs. They didn't oh yeah, that's right. Else. I forgot that's what you were doing. <laughs> All right. One of the things I was going to get is some plus two masterwork on my armor. Because I need the AC so I can continue to be the tank. Which is 1600 gold. Uh. And maybe if I can find something that's not too expensive that adds defense. I want a life drinker weapon. Oh, wait. Well, it's all... Jace had that on his chain. It's only on melee weapons, though. Jace was broken. Just a little broken. <laughs> That's what Jace he... was. Jace was broken. He wasn't as broken as Paladin Althea. No. I wouldn't be no, able to she, use she, it anyway. She was the... <laughs> she was the bar. <laughs> she, she was min-maxed to a stupid amount. She was one of those people. <laughs> Ooh, battle forge. That's for plate armor. That's I still can't believe that she practically she like damn near stood up to Minos. That was crazy. Well, he hit her and it did like nothing. I know it was great. And, and she had she had that you know. Oh, can I have another? <laughs> she was all excited because somebody was actually putting up a fight against her. <laughs> Uh, 
I miss her. She was so awesome. <laughs> I just loved her dry, like, British wit. <laughs> oh, and of course, things that deal with, like, second wins and... Uh, temporary hit points. Temporary hit points and... What am I thinking of? Healing surges? That, that doesn't do you any good. Yeah, that's... that's... See, that, that's why I can't take the life drinker weapon. Gives They're you... broken now. <laughs> it gives me nothing. No, no. Well, you can convert it from temporary hit points into that it actually heals you. Because I was thinking of taking... I think it was uh, making, his, making uh, Jackson's Hammer a sacrificial one, which... Instead of using a... Uh, <laughs> that sounds like the worst thing ever. <laughs> a sacrificial hammer? <laughs> <laughs> I want to sew my banjo. <laughs> Make a sacrifice of a hammer? This guy standing up the altar, like, smashing the shit out of his <laughs> well, I, for I, for I forget what it does. Um, let me open up the... The, uh... Adventurer's Vault. Weapons. Oh, that might have actually been armor, actually. <coughs> that one it was a weapon? Sacrificial, yeah. Sacrificial weapon. Basically, he uses his own hit points to... Heal somebody? I think it was. What was it? Hold on. Uh, sacrificial weapon. Um, uh, once per day, you can use this power when you hit with the weapon. Instead of regaining hit points, you cause the target to become weakened until the end of your next turn. So they do half damage. I thought that would be kind of nice for boss battles. But he'd have to sacrifice a fourth of his health to do it. Since that's what, what, what a uh, healing surge is. It's a fourth of your health. Okay, I'm going to get... Spend the cash on that. This one... Battle Forge. See here. You use a. You use your second wind when you are bloodied. Regain. One d10 extra. Now, I have a second wind, but it's just a property. So that any time. So let's do if bloodied. One D ten to healing powers. So if I'm at half health, I can heal you guys better. Or heal myself better. Depending on the situation. Let's see. Alright, so we are taking Dropping twenty six hundred dollars on that. Six eighty two twenty six hundred to fifty eighty two. Boom boom. Wasn't me. Somebody sent me a wrong number. <laughs> hey, baby, there's a party in my pants and you're invited. Oh, my. <laughs> From 
um, Minneapolis. Well then. Yeah. <laughs> okay then. Wasn't me, I'm still here in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> it might be me. Haven't left for Canada yet. <laughs> Well, I, I doubt you'd have a Minneapolis area code. No. Unless I was using a payphone, maybe that'd be weird. Yeah. Especially since mm. I got a text message. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Alright, so my plate body armor is now... Masterwork Battleforge plate battle body armor. Battle forged. Plate. Body armor. Plus three. AC. And. Bloody. One D ten healing checks. Three armor class. Yeah. That's nice. That's my armor at twenty one. I need to get some diamonds on. I have a diamond ring. Oh, you do? You could have it appraised, yeah. Why did we decide that... Mick, do you remember what appraising was? Because we broke it down to three different abilities. Ah, uh, crap. Um... Crap. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it. Cause it depended it what it was. Appraiser? It depended if it was art or if it was. I think art was history. Religious objects. Religious was religion, of course. Yeah, Magic objects and... were arcana. Yeah. And I think jewels and stuff. Or jewels. Were they just. Were they just. Pers might have just been a perception check. It might have been perception. I think it was perception. That's at least 300 gold. That saves me. Check the other jewelry. That way I have at least... I can only cast it once, so, I mean... I only... Oh, by the way. Yeah? I still have four the four paintings. Well, you can try and fence those. And did I? Did we ever split up that 3,500 3, gold? I don't know. Nick has most of my gold. Uh, uh, where did I put that... I have that listed. I think we I think we divvied it up. I think we divvied it up, yeah. Okay. I I still had it marked down on my inventory. Oh, did those I forget if those uh No, because that was all dream shit, wasn't it? Lady still has those six evil books. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, you probably could have handed those off to Francois. 
I was gonna say, did she get rid of them to Francois? <laughs> Probably. Okay. I mean, he, he'd be the one to get rid of them to. Alright. Because he could have them properly disposed of. Right. Okay. Ow! Critical damage is power when you hit with a weapon. Target takes a negative two penalty to all defenses. Okay. I'll spend the money for that. Um. Did you happen to write down what I told you the amount was? For those paintings? Uh... Like four paintings worth X amount, and then you can try to get more or less for it? I think it was four paintings worth 38 gold. Ah. Sure it wasn't like 380 gold? That doesn't it sound have, right. It might have been. I'd... Hell, it also might have been thir four paintings and 38 gold. I just have four paintings, comma, 38 gold. Treasures! Treasure! Random treasure! Paintings, 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 paintings. Four paintings. <laughs> Gems are art objects. Art objects. Oh, no, no. No, no. You're right. 38? Mm, well, I don't see 38 anywhere. But the smallest amount, which is probably what it was, was five paintings worth 25 gold each. <clears throat> so the 38, I think, might have just been 38 gold. Okay. But it was five paintings worth 25 gold each, and you could try to get more. Oh. Well, I'm gonna... S Wait, you, I have five paintings? Yes. Not four. Five. Okay. 54. Got it. Alan would probably try to sell the paintings, and of course he would haggle. Of course. That's gonna be... Deception. These were my grandmother's books. 